little boy over there playing. Hare Krishna. Uh, just wanted to talk about flowers and offerings. Um, a lot of times in the morning, early in the morning before the sun rises, I'm walking through various neighborhoods. And in these wee hours of the morning before dawn, the air is very clear. There's a lot of ashe in the air, a lot of powerful energy. It's a time of the day we call Brahma Muhurta. And in this time, it's very auspicious for all kinds of uh, spiritual activities, meditating, chanting. So I take my walks and I, I go ahead and chant. And sometimes I come across these real nice flower beds, you know. And I offer those things mentally to my spiritual master, Prabhupada. You say, well, why don't you offer it to God? Well, actually, when you offer something to the spiritual master, it's just as good as offering it to the Lord himself which gives you some light on why the Messiah, Yeshua, Ben Pantera, the one they call Jesus Christ, actually is Yeshua, the son of the panther, he would say things like, no one comes to the Father except by me. Because the spiritual master passes on that energy, that love and that devotion on to his spiritual master and on and on and on to the unbroken chain where it goes all the way back to Sri, Sri Radha Govinda. So in essence, you can offer things to the spiritual master. It's easier because it's more guaranteed to get through than trying to approach the Lord directly, actually. And, you know, we can go into that in another, another video. But the reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, sometimes I see these plants and they're full of all of this ashe, all of this good energy. That's the best time to pick your herbs. That's when they have the most medicine in the plants is during the Brahma Mohurta hour, right before the sunrise, about a half an hour to an hour and a half before the sunrise up until sunrise and even after slightly after sunrise there's still a lot of that auspicious energy in the air so you see like chinese asians everybody working out during those early morning hours there's a lot more reasons so i offer these flowers to the spiritual master mentally because in this age right there was a time thousands of years ago when you thought of a bad deed i think i mentioned this before you thought of doing something bad it was the same as doing it. You still got the bad karma for doing it. But if you thought of something good, you also got the good karma for that. But in this age, because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when you think of doing something good, you get the reward. But you don't get the punishment for thinking of doing something bad. So I see these flowers and I offer them to Srila Prabhupada mentally, right? And then the next day or whenever I come back again, I see the same flower bed and I offer them same flowers to them again. And you say, well, how can you offer the same flowers twice? Well, simple. Biologically speaking, those plants are not the same plants that I saw before. Every day, trillions of cells may die and trillions of cells may be replaced. So that young boy that we see there, that's not the same little baby that came out of his mother some nine years ago, nearly ten years ago. That boy right there is not the same kid that I used to pick up with one hand and sh like right here and my arm and stuff like that and take pictures you know all right cool so that's not the same person the person is the same the soul is the same the body is totally different every seven years your bone tr structure changes completely it's not the same bones at the age of 21 that you had at 14 and it won't be the same bones at 42 or 49 or whatever multiples of seven may exist so when you offer a person flowers that haven't been picked and they're still alive, actually you can re-offer those things again and again and again because they're alive, they're constantly changing. It's never the same. So, you know, I just want to share with you that it's a lot of good energy out there if you'll just reach out and grab it. And I'm getting a lot of um, intangible benefits from this Krishna conscious process. Most people want to see money. Money is the stamp of validity for the worldly mundane masses. Ain't nobody going to listen to you if you ain't got no money. Well, I ain't going to say I'm broke either. I'm not like financially well off. I can't buy a car tomorrow or nothing like that. But I eat every day, so I guess I'm financially well off. You know, money is not the stamp of validity for anything except for the fact that you're either fortunate or you worked hard for what you got. And money is just like Lakshmi. Lakshmi is a very powerful goddess. She resides at the, she resides on the chest of Krishna in the form of a lock of hair. 
that's her form in the highest realm of Goloka Vrindavan. She always has a, she's a lock of hair right here. But even Lakshmi doesn't stick with Krishna all the time. Because so many people are supplicating her for a material benefit. Everybody wants something. And some people do their rituals properly or do things with a pure heart. She departs and goes to serve those people and give them some money or some good luck or some good fortune. So in the process, she leaves the feet of Krishna. She leaves the side of Krishna to go serve her devotees. And like any realistic man, you know, you got a wife or a conjugal mate or a consort, whatever she is. Anytime your woman leaves you, there's always that doubt in your mind, you know? Is she really going to work or could she be up to something else? Or even if you know what she's supposed to be doing. The point is, you know, every man likes his woman to be by his side all the time. But Lakshmi is, I don't want to call her fickle, right? But she's there sometimes and sometimes she ain't. So don't let the temporary appearance and disappearance of financial good fortune deter you from your path or your good nature or your good energy. You're an eternal spiritual being. You are a part and parcel. When you say part, that means unch in Sanskrit. And when you say the complete whole, that's unchi. So we are parts and Krishna is the complete, complete whole. Thank you, son. Krishna is the complete whole. He is unchi. If we are parts of a machine, or better yet, let's look at this. It's acorn. It's a part of a tree. This twig, part of a tree. That acorn is going to live on somehow because it's going to find some soil and grow into another tree. But generally speaking, for an acorn to be a part of the complete whole, it still has to be connected to the tree. Same thing for the twigs, the leaves. They have no real purpose unless they are connected to the complete whole. So we are parts of the supreme whole. And once we are reconnected to the supreme whole, some weird stuff starts happening. You know, I had a real, real powerful incident the other day. My man Yassar Ansar was a part of that powerful situation as well as my brother with some friends passing through Jamaica Ave. It was a, a very powerful experience because I wasn't expecting the reception that I received. And the only thing I could ascertain is that it's my journey through Krishna consciousness, my constant contact with Krishna. I'm always chanting his names and they say that having holy names is as good as having himself he said he put all of his power into his holy names in this age because the people are so fallen they can't approach him directly so directly he will come to you in the form of his names and that's just the beginning of the journey and i'm constantly engaging this maha mantra every day and then some some real beautiful divine things are happening that can't be equated financially how long eight, eight minutes all right it can't be equated like I, I couldn't trade all of the good things that have happened for me in in relation to Krishna consciousness I couldn't trade them for no dollar amount you know and I'm not asking for poverty you know what I'm saying I, nobody really wants to be poor unless they're on a whole nother level but the point is I can't I, I can't find any higher value than Krishna consciousness I've looked I've learned a lot of things this it's nothing out there. It's like everything else is just endless speculation. Whereas this is the doorway to the endless. The real realm. The true realm. You know, so I just want to encourage all of the devotees out there. I want to give all glories to the assembled devotees. I want to continue to encourage you to keep progressing in Krishna consciousness. You will see results. Don't think that you give Krishna something and you don't get something in return. Don't think. Don't think for a minute. That this is not a reciprocal relationship. The servant and the master are 100% reciprocal in a spiritual relationship. In a material relationship, the servant gets it with no Vaseline. <laughs> you know what I mean. I ain't even got to say it. You know what I'm saying? The servant uh, in this material world is no reciprocity. In matters of love or finance or whatever, you very rarely get your fair share. But I rest assure you, if you just experiment with this Maha Mantra, maybe 10 minutes a day, like Srila Prabhupada recommends, he said just do it for one week, seven days, 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, that's equivalent to saying it 108 times, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, 
It's very important to say this. Even in ancient Kemet, they used the word Hare. This was a Hakao, a word of power. Please use these holy names. It's your only shield in this age. It'll shield you. Haribo! It'll shield you. Haribo, Haribo. When the sun rises in the east and sets over there in the west towards the city. This is Overlook Park right now, right? When the sun rises and sets, it actually drains the duration of your life. On a molecular level, the sun is what influences your aging. And it is known that the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra actually counter counteracts the effects of aging, stress hormones. It is truly the vehicle for deliverance in this age. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't true. All I'm saying is I'm seeing things happening in my life that's... It, I couldn't have set it up in a million years. The way these things are going is is, is beautiful, and I I don't even Shy. want I don't want no fortune teller to tell me my future. I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Because as far as I'm concerned, my destiny has been destroyed. See, people born under the influence of the sun, moon, and stars, they face a certain destiny in this life according to the manifestation of their body at the time of birth. However, Saturn is set up in Jupiter and Mars and Venus. That's a whimsical process, man. You got all of these houses and these negative signs and all of these houses and these good signs. That's a whimsical process. It could go any way from birth to birth to birth. You could be born under any configuration. But when you start chanting this Hare Krishna mantra, it starts to destroy your karma, both good and bad. And you know what happens? Once you relieve yourself of that kind of material energy, that material burden, the unch starts to return to the unchi. The part goes back to the whole. And you spend so much time with Krishna in the form of this holy, beautiful mantra that he starts to rub off on you. One of his 64 excellent attributes is that he is all auspicious. So even if I get hit by a truck, that was auspicious. Because it probably has something to do with Krishna's will. Maybe he wanted y'all to see how a man could lift up a truck with his bare hands and throw it like his name is Spider-Man. I don't know. But the point being, everything dealing with Krishna and Krishna consciousness is auspicious. There is no downside to dealing with Krishna. Even when you see stories like the Ramayana or the Mahabharat where there are seemingly tragic incidents, all of those things have a flip side to them. But because people are not privy to spiritual matters, they interpret it in a mundane way that is governed by the five senses. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. I don't even know what to name this video. I guess flowers and offerings. Offer something nice to someone today. But do it in the spirit of love and devotion. Because that's all that you really own. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo!